All right, guys, welcome back to American Heritage Garage. In today's video, we are coming back with part two of the 1966 Ford F100 power steering conversion and more video. Um, so in the last video, we got the steering gearbox out, the steering column out, got everything prepped and ready to start making the transition to power steering. So if you didn't see part one, click up here in the corner, it should come up right about now and uh, go check that video out. It'll catch you up. Um, so pretty much where we're at is we are ready to put the gearbox in the new power steering gearbox. Uh, I'm waiting on a couple parts, the pitman arm and some different things to actually get the linkage and make sure that's all going to fit right. Um, but once we get that gearbox in, we can measure for the steering column, decide if we're going to cut it or if we got to get a new one or what we're going to do. So uh, let's quit talking and get to it. Okay guys, so here's where we're at. Um, again, everything's out of the vehicle. Uh, no gearbox, no column, no exhaust manifold, no anything. Now I'll tell you right now, I test fit the power steering gearbox last night. It's big. We already discussed that in the last video. It's a lot bigger than the manual steering box. Uh, so we knew that going in. We just kind of crossed our fingers that everything would be okay. So there's really one issue as I can see right now and this engine mount right here okay about half of this needs to get trimmed out of here now we're not cutting into any of the structure just a little bit of this because this gearbox needs to be able to tilt back just a little bit farther so i can line the bolt holes up but the back of the gearbox is a little too long and it hits on this cross member so we just need to cut a little bit of this out so that's what i'm going to do right now i'm going to get all this cleaned up I'm going to mark it and I'm going to cut this out and then I'm going to set the gearbox back in and see if I can get the bolts lined up. With it in there kind of halfway last night, I was able to slip the exhaust manifold in there. It's close. Okay. It's going to be close, but that should be, shouldn't be a problem. Um, I, I'm not foreseeing any issues with that. So um, I just wanted to tell you where we're at to start here. Uh, let me get some uh, stuff to clean this off and uh, some stuff to cut some stuff and uh, yeah we'll be good to go stick with me i got the notch cut out in this motor mount here okay so the back of the gearbox can dip in um, far enough like i said it needed to tilt a little farther so now if you guys can see from your angle i can't even get my finger in between the end of the shaft of the, the steering box and the actual housing of the steering column. So I already nipped off the uh, shifter arms, so we're committed now. So if I take my rag joint and I line that up right about where it's going to be, I can see how much I need sticking out. Okay. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to take this out of here. Okay. And I'm going to take three inches from the end of the shaft or the end of the column housing up. Okay. So right on the other side of where the shift linkage came out. So the end of that is going to be right about where my thumbnail is right here. At that point, I'll take three inches out of the center of the steering shaft itself. And that should leave me with two and a quarter stick out which then I'll be able to press the end of the rag joint onto the shaft and I'll have a little bit left over in and out from, uh, from the inside if I need to make any adjustment. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with where we're at so far. Um, now the question is going to be making sure that I can make this column work, but I'm pretty happy. Uh, I'm happy that this made it in. It's bolted up tight. Um, I shouldn't have an issue with power steering lines or anything. Uh, everything's going to be up and out of the way. I'm going to have to most likely remake this brake line because the rag joint's going to hit it. 
I'm pretty sure. We'll see. I might be able to just slightly bend it a little. Uh, I don't want it to be too close to the exhaust manifold. The manifold does fit in there without touching anything. So yeah. Um, and I'm able to use the factory firewall mount here. I won't have to uh, cut that down or anything like that, or I won't have to put a floor, floor mounted one on the inside. Uh, I just had to change these holes just a little bit so I could shift this whole thing up and I still got a little more to go on that. Uh, but so far, so good. So what I didn't, I don't know if I told you, this is a, a power steering box out of a 1972 F100. Again, this truck is a 1966. So the pump, the bracketry, the box will all be from a 72 F100. I've heard that you can get later model Ford columns that are shorter, which would make sense. But in the spirit of saving a little money and doing a little fabricating, I'm going to do it this way. There's naysayers, I don't care, whatever. Tough luck, this is how I'm gonna do it. So uh, that being said, pretty happy so far with how everything's going. Uh, I'm gonna take this apart, cut that off, and then I'll, uh, I'll be back with you. Okay guys, so we are moving right along. As you can see, I have the steering shaft uh, in the vise. I'm gonna move the camera up here. I made my cut. Okay, I'm starting to re-weld it right here. So I got this tacked all the way around. I need, to, uh, I need to clean this all up. I'm gonna keep making a couple passes just for strength. Uh, it's pretty darn straight. I'm pretty darn happy with it. You can see here, we're, uh, I don't know how much you can see of that, but on the straight edge, it's, it's pretty good. So that's what I cut off the um, steering column, okay? So this would have been the end closest to the gearbox right here. This is where our shift arms came out. Uh, that is three inches, okay? Three inches right here. Um, cut it right past the shift arms. Um, then what I was able to do up on the upper side of the column, I was able to remove the actual shift lever. And when I removed the shift lever, the shift tube came out. Once the shift tube came out, uh, I cleaned up all the inside of the column and I put the bearing cap in here if you can kind of see right in the end here the bearing cup for the new for the new bearing okay what i was looking for on the steering shaft was approximately two and a quarter inches of stick out from the actual housing here and we are right about there uh, this is what i cut out of the center of the steering column so i sectioned it i did not cut just the end off because of the splines so I cut about eh, I don't know I'd say three or four inches below the splines right here then down three inches that's gonna leave me with my proper stick out so that's where I'm at right now I'm just working through uh, some more welding weld up that shaft uh, I have everything to reassemble the column right now so we will test fit the column if we're happy with that, we are gonna go ahead and press the uh, rag joint coupler back on the end of the column once it's all welded up and back together. And we'll be able to mount the column back in the car or into the truck. Uh, then we'll touch up a couple things with the gearbox, make sure that's tight and in place, and then we can, uh, we can lock it in, make sure our pitman arm and everything's gonna fit and line up right, and we'll be good to go. So that's where we're at right now. Um, I'm trying to show as much of what I'm doing kind of in the middle. So, so far we've mounted the new gearbox. We had to make some clearance for that uh, on the one motor mount. I'll show you before we put that in for good. Uh, and then we cut the end off of the steering column housing. And then we sectioned the actual steering shaft. Um, so new bearings, new stuff on the column and it'll be back together. So the steering shaft is finished. Got it welded up. Looks pretty straight, doesn't it? 
looks straight to me so that's good um, I finished up cutting the column I'll go over here and show you um, doing something a little different other than the tripod got her hanging up here um, got the new bearing cap in there um, cut the shifter uh, knob that stuck out of the side of it cut that off got that welded up it's it looks pretty good um, the aluminum wasn't that great on the bell here but did the best I could um, so this is getting painted now I got my power steering bracket and actually the pump I got it in the sandblast cabinet here I'm gonna clean it up the pump actually looks pretty good I got a new seal for the front here uh, here is the original Ford style bracket uh, the other piece is still over there so I'm gonna clean that stuff up uh, shoot some paint on it and we'll be ready to uh, put this stuff back on the truck So what I'm going to do, because I have to replace the harmonic balancer and put a two-groove harmonic balancer in, uh, which I got from Summit, pretty sure, two-groove harmonic balancer. Uh, there's a part number right there. I'm pretty sure it was Summit. I don't recall off the top of my head. I've had a couple people asking me some questions about what parts I used and so on and so forth. So we'll get there in a second. Um, so I'm a little skeptical of this radiator. Okay. Uh, you can see the oxidation, whatever you'd want to call it. It's on the tank and everything down here. Uh, it has not leaked. It didn't leak when it was brought to me. It didn't leak when I took it out for a drive. I'm going to pull it out, clean it up, double check everything uh, just to be safe. Plus, it makes life easier getting my puller in to get that balancer off. Once I get the radiator out, which I already took off the upper and lower hoses, easy stuff. You guys know the drill when it comes to that. Two hose clamps along the side here. We have one, two, looks like a ground there of some sort. On the other side, there's also one and two. Uh, so I did finish up getting everything blasted. There's our rag joint coupler. There's our steering column to firewall clamp. Uh, there's another little clamp used for the steering column. That is what clamps the steering column to the firewall bracket. Here we have the turn signal lever. And we'll go in back here. And I will show you the column. I'm going to still do another coat on the column. I want to hit it with a little sandpaper. There's a couple areas I'm not super happy with how it turned out uh, based on budget constraints etc etc I'm not doing super duper fancy paint with this it's just spray paint so uh, I'll still hit it with a little clear but there's our column cut short back here we have our power steering pump bracket power steering pump and pulley that we got from carpart.com 
which is a national database for salvage yards. Uh, so I had already purchased a power steering pump, a Thompson style power steering pump for this. Uh, the round, the round reservoir, not a Saginaw style. Uh, and then I had a hard time finding a pulley that I needed. Uh, and then some of the bracketry was crazy, crazy expensive. Um, so basically with what I ended up, uh, finding, I was somewhere in the area of like three to $400 for a pump, new pump, new aftermarket style bracketry, pulley, uh, you know, by the time you get a belt, et cetera, et cetera, stuff like that. Um, it was just getting crazy. So I just happened to look at this, uh, carpart.com and I found a whole bracket pump lines cooler everything uh, at a place in North Plate Nebraska uh, it was 72 bucks he shipped it up to me even the pumps in good shape the lines look like they were brand new so I have no idea I'm gonna throw there the that pump that I got on here if it doesn't work i still have another one if it does work great i'll send that one back well everybody saves a little bit of money uh we're all happy um still got to pull this box out and touch up a little stuff here uh just tap tap shoot a couple little welds uh clean this all up make it look nice and uh we'll shoot it with some gray primer or something like that not since we're not painting the whole thing it would look kind of stupid to paint one motor mount um, but I know somebody had asked kind of what I'm doing here. So since we're in part two, uh, instead of getting an aftermarket column or even getting a late model, this is a 66. So, um, a later model column, I just cut down the original column. Uh, I'm making it three speed on the floor as opposed to three on the tree. Uh, I found the bearing carrier, a new bearing, a retainer, all that stuff. Uh, I sectioned down the steering shaft three inches. So I cut three inches off the end of the steering column housing. Then I cut three inches out of the center of this, got it nice and straight, welded it back together, did several passes with the welder, cleaned it up, did several more passes, nice and strong. Uh, and it gives me with, it leaves me with two and a quarter inches of stick out here. We will smack this coupler onto the end of this. Uh, and it should be good to go once we put the column together. Um, then we'll put it all, set it all up, get it all together. Um, so basically, the power steering parts I'm using for this setup, I looked up everything for a 72. Okay, this is a 66. It was the last of the, I believe, fourth gen F series pickups, maybe third gen. I'm not 100% sure. I, I looked and I forgot. This is not a factory engine in this vehicle. It's a 390, so it's a FE block. So I looked up 1972 F100 with a 390 power steering pump, right? That's what I got. So it's going to fit this. Gearbox, 72 F100, LMC truck. Um, between LMC truck, Summit, uh, Eckler's, that you can pretty much get everything you need. But so far, now I haven't started this thing to make sure it works and all this, but as of right now, you basically do everything as it's a 72 and you're good to go. So this is what they call a Saginaw power steering gearbox. Ford in the earlier days around 66 used a Bendix power steering box. Uh, very hard to find. If you have one, you can get them rebuilt. If you don't have one, they're either super expensive or just hard to find overall. Uh, and then the other thing, this is a top, what they call Ford top loader three speed transmission. Um, so being that it's three on the tree, it had the shift levers that come into the side where the um, shift forks are. What I'm going to have to do is use this guy. Okay, and I actually have two of these. So if anybody's interested, I'll have an extra one here once I decide which one I like better. Uh, they're both in really good shape. What this is is a the shifter assembly off of a t150 transmission ran in cjs jeep cjs in like 76 through 79 uh it will fit on the top of the transmission we'll cut a hole in the floor we'll 
put this thing up through and that should be that now we do have to pull the trans i'm going to replace a couple of seals and we do have to get the shift forks out of the side of the transmission so there might be some work but i'll kind of do a separate deal on on that uh right now this is power steering only um so just as a catch-up that's where we're at so what i'm going to do here real quick uh, is pull the radiator four bolts no big deal um i'll show you how i pull the, the harmonic balancer off um we'll put the new one on and that'll probably wrap it up for me for today um tomorrow i got some other stuff to do pull this gearbox finish up some of that stuff uh by that time everything should be nice and dry uh, I need to put the exhaust on, and then I'll put the steering column in, um, get all that stuff buttoned up and tight again, uh, since we made our our fixes to the, you can't see, to the flanges there. So that's where I'm at right now. I'll uh, touch base with you in a second here. So here's the radiator, the lower tank. Like I said, it's a lot of discoloration, a lot of... Uh, corrosion of course it's copper tanks but yeah it, uh, I don't know um, I talked to a company locally that recores radiators he's thinking probably somewhere in the area of 350 uh, I found them a little cheaper online I found them a little more expensive online so we'll just kind of see I'm gonna hose this thing out and flush some water through it and like I said it didn't leak so the only thing I can think is this thing did leak at some point and somebody fixed it. I'm not sure, but uh, I don't know. Not not super super pleased. So we're getting ready to pull the harmonic balancer off of the um, truck here to replace it with the two groove harmonic balancer. Um, I just wanted to take a quick minute to show you guys. Uh, here is your standard harmonic balancer puller tool um, right here comes with several different bolts um, the actual puller and that's that this is an installer I'll show you that when we go to put the new one on so basically what this kit consists of so this is gonna lay across the front of the balancer right here you're gonna use three bolts okay there's holes in the balancer Okay, here, 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 and here. Some have three, some have four. Um, and basically, you put it in a way that they'll fit. Okay, usually you want to try and get three of them. It depends on this one doesn't like to seem like it wants to fit so well. Um, this will go right into the end of the crankshaft. You want to be a little careful not to damage the threads, okay, with your end here. So um, we'll go set it up on this other one, and I'll... Uh, I'll show you how to take it off but essentially what you're going to end up doing and we'll try it by hand first if it gets too tight and starts to spin the motor we'll have to use the impact um, but you're basically turning this guy and this bracket is drawing the harmonic balancer off of the engine okay so i have my puller attached here it's pretty straight um, i did put a little kind of a heavy duty washer um, I didn't want that thing to sink too far and mess up the threads in the end of the crankshaft. Um, like I said, normally I try to use a half inch wrench, but in this case, I think it's going to spin the engine. So we're just going to put a little bit on it with the impact and see if, it, if it's going to come off nicely or... I don't know if you guys can see, but it's pulling it off real easy. So just like that, the balancer is off. Okay, so here's our two balancers. You know, of course they're gonna look a little bit different. But what I want to double check before we get started is where our timing marks are uh, in relation to the keyway and uh, just make sure that everything's gonna gonna sit on there right um, I mean they definitely have a little bit of a different look to them 
My biggest concern is that um, the new balancer is going to stick out too far. Uh, and if that's the case, we just uh, get a new one. So as it stands right now, the mark that they have for top dead center does not match up with the mark they have top dead center for this one. So our keyways pretty much right now are facing me. This one shows a timing mark here. And on this one, you guys are a little off. So here's our keyways right here and right here. The timing mark, the, the top dead center mark is right here on this one. And it's all the way over here. So almost like, I don't know, a hundred degrees off from center. So we'll, uh, if we tried to set the timing to this mark, it would goof everything up. So we'll, we'll double check everything and just possibly make new marks. We'll measure and do some different stuff like that. So, um, basically when you put this thing on, you'll use this kit and I'll show you when we, uh, when we get to that point. Okay. So bummer, but, uh, again, here's the factory, uh, Ford balancer with the single groove. Uh, the one I picked up was wrong. Um, it, uh, it's just not going to work. Um, the diameter here, the crankshaft's different. And so I'm going to do one of two things. I'm either going to pick up another just balancer with a two groove pulley, or I'm going to try and get another pulley that actually sits in here that I can screw to the end of the balancer. I haven't decided it's Sunday and I'm not going to spend all that much time. Uh, I'm looking around today. I'll wait till I go home. Uh, so what I'm going to do is mess around, pull that gearbox out, touch some stuff up underneath there, just a little, little odds and ends stuff. Uh, and then I think I am going to finish up the front side here, everything but the balancer. So I will get the exhaust on, get the steering column on, uh, get it in there. Uh, that's pretty much it. Okay guys, so I have my installer down on there and I'm just going to use a crescent wrench. I'm just going to turn this guy as this thing seats. It should just stop. Turning it. Basically this is pushing it on. You don't ever want to use the bolt and the washer that goes in the center of the crankshaft or the center of the balancer into the crankshaft because you risk tearing the threads up in there and then you're in more of a pickle. So this is pressing it on as opposed to pulling it on. So there I stopped, the engine turned. I'll stick my head under there. Double check. Now we'll loosen the puller. As I loosen this, You'll see how it threads on. So you got your center shaft here. You got a nut here. You got a bearing right there. So there's, here's your, your center shaft. Here's your jam nut. Here's your bearing. This guy should thread out. Hopefully what was in the engine comes out with this because there's no hex or anything on it. So. There we go. So here's your center that it's got we got different sizes in the kit that thread into the crankshaft. So that's that. So now I'm gonna run the crankshaft bolt in. Got a slightly not super great feeling about the the stick out on the pulley, but I'm gonna hammer this in anyway and see what happens uh don't break the bolt off in there it needs to be tight but you know how to work an impact so now get my pulley This is just a run-of-the-mill March Performance aluminum pulley. So 
So we got our pulley problem solved. Um, what I did here, just so you guys can see, I added a spacer back here. Let me come around to the other side. It's going to be a little hard to see. And then spacer there, and then there's a spacer down there. Uh, right now I have the alternator bracket and the alternator off. I'm going to sandblast that and the fan and this pulley here. But uh, everything's looking good. We'll do a little touch up on this before we ship it down the road. Uh, so let's go sandblast some stuff. So things are coming back together. Um, I know I talked about spacers on the power steering pump and the alternator. Uh, there's the rear spacer for it. I'll just show you one more time here. There are the front spacers. Uh, three quarter inch there. Uh, and I forgot exactly what these are. There's one there, one down there, and then one on the back side. Down back here in between the block. Um, so also while I was away, I kind of, uh, I painted these up a little bit. Uh, I'll show you here that everything lines up pretty good. So the power steering pump is going to go to the outside of the crankshaft pulley. And then you can probably tell from here that the alternator will go on the inside and then around the water pump. Uh, I remounted the manifolds. I got the gearbox permanently mounted in here. Okay, fits good. Steering columns in. I still got to put the bracket up there. Uh, I have not mounted the exhaust yet. Uh, and we're also doing the uh, transmission. That's another video, waiting on some stuff. So the exhaust still has to get put back up. But I'll wait probably to put the trans back up to do that. Uh, a couple other things that will be coming in an upcoming video. Um are kingpins okay so the kingpins on this you probably can't see but you can hear the kingpins are pretty uh pretty loose on both sides okay here's our pitman arm okay all set up it's pretty good the only thing that i have an issue with is when i turn these wheels out which it's going to be kind of hard for me to do like this but watch the stop so it really wants to stop like right where I'm at right now and it takes a lot of force to get it to hit the stop it's not as bad going the other way you'll actually hear it see it hits the stop going that way so there is a little bit of binding uh, I'm not sure if I'll be able to fix that with an alignment I'm gonna change the position of this collar a little bit maybe uh, we'll see what I can do to make uh, basically what it is is the end that goes over to the right side here so the main i don't know what it's called center link drag link right side tie rod in i have no idea 
uh, is too short by just a little bit, I think, and it's causing it to bind. So the old Pittman arm did have a little bit of a different angle. Kind of, kind of was down a little farther here, and it was a touch longer, about a half inch longer. So, you know, we're, we're going to deal with some stuff like that. Um, but again, Pittman arm, gearbox, uh, 72 Chevy, power steering pump bracket, 72 Chevy with 390. That's just where I went, what number I went with. Um, but yeah, here's your fitment with the manifold and everything. There's a pretty decent clearance. I thought it was going to be tighter. So bolt manifolds in, um, measure belts, get belts put in here, put the radiator back in. We uh, won't be too far once I get the trans rebuilt and back on the ground. All right, guys, we are on the last leg of the power steering. Uh, as you can see uh, on the axles, I have the wheels um, off the ground. I put it under the axles so it would keep the steering geometry proper. So what we're going to do here real quick is bleed the power steering system. Um, as you can see, once again, I'm missing some stuff. Um, I did start this thing uh, just to see how it sounded. And the water pump was making all kinds of crazy noise. So um, the water pump's getting replaced. Also, it's going to be a little hard for you to see, but this thing started leaking out of the radiator, which we kind of knew because of some of the corrosion. Um, but what are you going to do? So that'll get replaced too. This thing is basically going to be a brand new truck. So let me get you propped up here, and I will show you how to properly bleed um, this power steering system. I'll tell you when I started it, I did try to turn the wheels once and it was kind of crazy. So let me uh, let me show you what we're dealing with here. So I do have the pump um, right here. It's just kind of hanging here. Um, I got it hooked up with a piece of wire. So what I did, a lot of times you can just bleed this up in the air um, and just turn the wheel back and forth, lock to lock, lock to lock a bunch of times. Well, this system, all it wanted to do was just push out the fluid. Just wanted to push the fluid out. There was a considerable amount of air in there. So what I did was I rigged up a piece of hose right here to make it fit. I used a little tape, made it fit nice and tight, taped up the joint so it's down in the filler. Then I got just a little adapter piece. I made that also nice and tight. And then I have um, this hose looped around into a little uh, jar of, this is a uh, type F ATF fluid. That's what I'm using for the power steering fluid for this Ford. So I will just show you what should happen. I've done this a couple times, so there's not as much air. But as I was turning the locks around, there are going lock to lock. There was a lot of air in there. So give me a second here. So in a minute here, I'm going to go turn these wheels and you should be able to see uh, with no problem what uh, how the air comes out. You'll see the bubbles coming through. Now, I, like I said, I turned this a couple times and there was a lot of air in here. So you need to have this sitting in some fluid. So otherwise, it'd just be sucking air back and forth. Um, we'll end up having to take a little fluid out of this system. But uh, you need this in fluid. You can't have it just drawn back air. Um, so it's kind of similar to how you would bleed brakes. If you do it that way, you can, you know, it just needs to be sucking fluid back and forth, back and forth. Uh, and you'll see the bubbles coming up and out of there, um, coming through the tube here. So what this was doing when I started it, I've actually never seen it before. Uh, it was like the steering wheel had a mind of its own. So I did have it running. And even with the tires on the ground, you would turn the wheel and it would, it would kind of like take off on its own and make a revolution or a revolution and a half and then kind of stop. And it would feel a little sticky and then you'd get it going again and it would do the same thing both directions uh, so it almost had a mind of its own so obviously this is all brand new stuff so i'm not anticipating there being anything wrong so i'll turn the wheels here a little and you should be able to see some air coming out all right so i got you in a little different direction so you'll you'll be seeing like here's an air bubble here but you'll you'll see it come up through you'll see the fluid level rise and and lower uh, in the little jar there and i'm able to watch this through the gap in the hood So there's some air coming out right there and I can see the bubbles in the bottom of the jar. So basically I'm just going to keep going and going and going and going and going and going 
until there's no more air bubbles coming out of there. Then we'll just keep turning and turning. Right now there's really no air, so I'll let it sit for a couple minutes, see if it picks up any more air. Keep turning, keep turning, keep turning. But essentially that's it. So we got the truck up on the alignment rack here. I'm gonna show you guys real quick. This is kind of the final step. So I wanna show you one other thing that I ended up doing. Um, I did replace the steering linkage here. Okay, so this is later model stuff. I forgot exactly, I believe it's uh, whatever, 67 to 72, I think. Um, so again, I had to go ahead and replace the um, gearbox again because the first one I had was faulty. So we got new, new bushings uh, on the ends. Back here, we got new bushings. Um, new shocks, new shocks in the rear, new leaf spring bushings. So uh, we're good to go. One thing I didn't realize that I did, I had this bolt turned around. So I had the head of the bolt out here and it was actually, this bolt was actually so long, you can see right there, it was hitting on the I-beam. I did not know that, so I fixed that today. That was kind of a funny thing, because I took it out for a quick drive and the thing was banging and beating and it wouldn't, it wouldn't sit level and I couldn't figure it out. So anyway, we're gonna do a quick alignment on this thing and that should be it, and then we'll go for a little test drive. Okay, folks, so here we are up on the rack. So we'll steer the wheels straight ahead, follow the prompts, make some adjustments, and be good to go. All right, guys, so we got the uh, alignment finished on the F100. <clears throat> it is officially complete. So we're going to do a little cold start. Um, take it for a little drive and uh, we'll wrap this sucker up. So uh, let's do this. So here you can see the three speed on the floor. Okay. We are going to give the pedal a couple pumps, pull the choke out. Turn the key, here she goes. Starts up pretty nice. Let it sit on the choke for a couple minutes, a couple seconds really, and then it starts to run like crap. Slowly push the uh, choke in, kind of hold the R's up a little bit. Like I said, we're going to take it down the road here. We'll see if this thing will take off or if it's still too cold. It's a little cold, but it's all right. So we're going to take a cruise down the road. We're going to talk a little bit about what we did to the truck. Start on the inside. We uh, replaced the heater core, fixed the cable that runs the heater box and everything. Uh, of course, took the three on the tree off and made it a three speed on the floor. Um, then we, let's see, what else did we do in there? Fix the windshield wipers. Uh, t -t -t -t, I'm looking at everything, trying to make sure. I think that's everything on the inside. So now we'll go to the outside. We uh, redid all the bushings, leaf spring bushings, all the front suspension bushings, strut rods, so on and so forth. Um, fix the bent axle up front. Ended up having to replace the whole tie rod center link assembly uh, due to the fact that we changed the pitman arm, due to the fact that we put a power steering gearbox in it. Um, then we, uh, what else did we do? We took the manifolds off, fixed those leaks, um, fixed some broken bolts, and Let's see, put a new water pump, new alternator, 
I had to put a new harmonic balancer on it and a new um, lower pulley there. So uh, for the most part, a new radiator, uh, windshield washer fluid pump. Uh, I think that's about it. I had to replace the valve stem and the left rear tire. Uh, rebuilt the carb, put a new carb spacer on it. Because this had the original one that had the coolant flowing through it and it was leaking all over the place. So, uh, yeah, that's that's kind of what we did. It was a uh, it was quite the project, but we got it done. No big deal. Uh, truck drives great. Steering wheel straight. Drives with one hand. Power steering works. No problem. Shifts good. Um, just so everybody remembers, the shifter is off of a Jeep. I believe it's off of the T-150 transmission, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it's been a while at this point since I've done it, but I had to goof around with some stuff. Had an issue with the uh, gearbox that I put in. It was it was faulty. I had to call LMC Truck, and they had had some issues with it. So um, they sent me a new one, told me to keep the old one, which is completely worthless to me. But, I mean, whatever. It's uh, is what it is. So, yeah, we, we've had to go through some stuff to get this thing back on the road and get it straight and right, but it's good now. Um, the alignment process, for those of you who don't know, without heating and bending, there is no way to actually uh, change the caster and camber angles. So we just uh, can only change toe, which isn't that big of a deal. Our caster angle on the right side was a little bit off, but like I said, there's not much we can really do. So we uh, just kind of make the best of what we got, and that's that. Uh, I did go through and double check all the brakes and everything, of course. Um, made sure they were all bled properly and all that stuff. Initially, we were going to do power brakes on this because it's still manual, but... Uh, we decided that once we got the brakes fixed that it stopped pretty well and we didn't necessarily think it needed the manual or the power brakes so we just kind of let that go so uh yeah that's that's pretty much the whole list still needs a few things needs a new dash pad new headliner but i'm not going to do any of that stuff um the customer can do that she should uh get a little practice and enjoy yourself doing that so yeah anyway i'm gonna shut up now and just to let you let you guys enjoy the ride back home and we'll uh close this video out and get this thing out of here oh, i don't know if you can hear this but it's got a cool little siren pull this guy back in and uh, we'll close this sucker out.
All right, guys, it's a nice, brisk, cool morning. Um, the 66 F100 is officially finished. So we are concluding part two of the power steering and more video. Um, if you guys just watched the drive I did, uh, I kind of went through a list of everything I did. Uh, it was pretty uh, comprehensive. I went through a lot of stuff on this truck. Um, there's a few things that could still have done to it, but you know, for right now, the truck drives great. Uh, it's got a little oil leak. The rear end is a little bit sloppy, but it's nothing uh, crucial right now. Uh, this truck, it's time, it's springtime, and it needs to go out and be enjoyed. Um, that being said, that's it. So uh, if you guys have any questions, I know you've been waiting on this video, and I'm sorry it took me so long. There was just some holdup with some back-ordered parts and some stuff that went on. Uh, with LMC truck and stuff that you know no major issues just they were great uh, I was just getting some stuff back to me that I needed to uh, to, to have to get the truck finished up so um, As always guys, please comment. Please subscribe if you haven't already done so like the video uh, Stay tuned. I try to get as much stuff out as possible. Sometimes I get kind of lax and uh, It takes a little while to get some stuff out. So with that being said guys, I really appreciate all your support I appreciate you watching my videos as always, until next time, we'll see you out here at American Heritage Garage.